Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I have here a Barnes & Noble Nook tablet, which I picked up today, um, November 16th, which is technically a day before it's supposed to go on sale, but uh, if you pre-order one, you should be able to pick it up already at your Barnes & Noble location, and if you ask nicely, they may have a couple of extras in stock, which is how I picked this one up. Um, I don't really do a lot of unboxing videos anymore, because a lot of the uh, products I get come straight from the manufacturer, and it's not exactly what you would see, but in this case, because it's a brand new item, and this is the uh, retail version. I figured I'd uh, take a quick look on the... Um, first of all, it's very small, very light uh, compared with, say, the box that came with the Velocity Micro 10-inch uh, tablet or even the version that comes with the Velocity Micro 8-inch tablet. You can see it's a pretty big difference here. Um, on the back, we've got some information about the tablet, including the fact that it's got a 7-inch Vivid View 1024 by 600 pixel display, support for 1080p video playback, weighs 400 grams, which is under a pound, uh, has a 1 gigahertz dual core processor, a microphone for the uh, read and record feature, which lets you read a book to a child in your own voice and they can play it back later, and 16 gigabytes of storage plus a micro SD card slot. Now, the thing about that 16 gigabytes of storage is um, most of it is actually reserved for. Uh, uh, applications and books and content downloaded from the Barnes & Noble store. Only one gigabyte is available if you want to sideload uh, information. So if you have your own music or movies or other things, you're probably going to want to get that micro SD card. It'll support extra, up to 32 gigabytes of extra storage that way. And that's pretty much it for the box, so let's uh, cut it open carefully here, because I paid for this one. Now in this little compartment, it looks like we've got a USB cable. And it looks like it is a somewhat standard, uh, I always get my minis and my micros mixed up, but this is the uh, same sort of cable that a lot of smartphones use, my uh, Google Nexus One uses it, the HP touchpad uses something very similar. So it should be interchangeable with a lot of other devices if you already have uh, this type of cable. I believe it's micro SD, or micro USB. We've also got a power adapter so that you can plug into a wall just by plugging the USB in there and plugging it in. And then we've got the tablet. So let's take it out. It's also a starting gu startup guide, which gives us information about well, we're having some focus problems here, but this gives us information about uh, turning it on for the first time uh, using the uh, microphone, headphone jack, uh, setting up, watching videos, connecting to Wi-Fi, and so forth, registering a device. It's uh, pl protected in plastic, so let's go ahead and take that off here. And here's the tablet. It's um, got a plastic case, but it's a very sturdy feeling plastic case. has a good feel in the hand. Uh, seems like something that should be pretty easy to hold. Um, it's probably heavier than, a, than some paperback books, but lighter than the hardcover book. So if you want to use it primarily for reading, um, it seems to be good size and weight for that. It's got that 7 inch 1024 by 600 pixel display. Just a single button down here for Nook. And on the bottom we've got a, uh, that micro USB space. We've got volume up and down buttons here on the side, and they're sort of built right into the case. Um, you almost wouldn't notice them if you weren't looking for them. Headphone jack at the top, and looks like that's where the microphone is as well. And power button on this side. Now in terms of the micro SD card, I think we're going to have to check with the uh, quick start guide to find out where that is. back of your Nook, lift the rubber flap with a Nook logo. Oh, interesting. So that's sort of hidden away here, and then we can
put a micro SD card in there for expansion. So it's tucked away in uh, such a place that it's probably not going to fall off. <laughs> um, and we've got a nice speaker here and the logo on the back. Um, I don't know if this guy is going to power up or not, but let's see what happens if we hit the power button. Okay, so it's starting for the first time. Uh, in the meantime, let's do a couple of quick size comparisons. We've got here a 8-inch Velocity Cruise Micro. You can see it's got an 800 by 600 pixel display. It's not quite as sharp, but it's larger. Here's a Samsung Galaxy Player 5.0. It's got a 5-inch display. Uh, thinner bezel, so overall a much smaller device, but it's only got an 800 by 480 pixel display, so it's um, not as much resolution and uh, not as much space there. Okay, so we've got information here for the setup. Um, skip the video. Terms and conditions, let's agree. What's my time zone? Let's say Eastern. And uh, finally, let's take a quick look at a size comparison here with, well, let me connect to Wi-Fi. This is the HP touchpad. I'm going to put my wireless password in real quick. So here's uh, the HP touchpad, uh, which weighs more like 1.6, 1.7 pounds, much larger, 1024 by 768 pixel display. And so you can see that the um, new Barnes & Noble tablet is definitely smaller, lighter, easier to hold. And you can also see here that the uh, keyboard is reasonably nice. It's not doing an auto-rotate thing right now. Maybe it won't do that on the setup. Um, you can thumb type, but I find it's easier to tap things in one letter at a time. Um, let me go ahead and real quick log in here. and we're logged in. So now we've got this get started. Um, we can watch tutorials, start shopping, uh, start and explore. And so let's just go to the uh, library page here. I believe I just have on my online account, I may have yeah a couple of free books that I've downloaded previously, so uh, or that I've added to my account previously. So let's see what happens if we just open one of these up real quick. And we'll take a look at the e-reading experience. We can see there's a status bar here at the bottom that gives us time and battery. And page turns are pretty good. We can adjust the fonts. So that's a quick look at the e-reader experience. Let's go back to the home screen. We can see a list of content that's available for me. Uh, books, newsstand, movies, music, apps. And it looks like we can download applications or go to the Nook App Store. Um, although this is running Android, it really doesn't look like a typical Android device, um, but these are Android applications that we're looking at. So for instance, if I want to purchase Angry Birds, I can do that from here. Uh, I don't know if they have the free version, or if you can sort by free. I've never, uh, I've never actually really used the original no Barnes & Noble Nook color, so I'm, I don't have a ton of experience here, but it's interesting to note that they have the Groove Shark application, which has been booted from the official Android market, but it is available here. Scrabble costs $2.99. Uh, I don't see the free version of Scrabble. Let's see what happens if we search for it. So yeah, it looks like you don't necessarily have access to some of the things that are available in the Android market, but over the next uh, couple of days here I'll be testing this out, seeing if you can hack it and do different things with it, install uh, applications that aren't available from the main Barnes Noble store. Um, it's got that micro SD card slot, which sets it apart from the Kindle Fire. Uh, but overall, in terms of just using it as an e-reader or uh, something to play apps, uh, games, read the, uh, the uh, newspapers and so forth, it looks like the, uh, the Nook tablet is a decent little device here. And here's the web browser. 
but uh, we're almost at 10 minutes. So this is uh, Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a first look at the Nook tablet.